Welcome to another edition of the Varsity Podcast. Justin Barney, Sponge Franklin, coming to you like we do every week, a little later in the week. But, man, we got games on Thursday night this week, Friday night, and then we can really start talking about playoffs. But before we look ahead to this week, our two nights of games, got to look back at last week. And, Sponge, I thought a couple last week really kind of stood out to me, our game of the week. Yeah. Ed White 21, Riverside 20. What a game that was. Crazy. Crazy. Decided <laughs> at the finish, a freshman running back on fourth and goal from the one-yard line. And bangs in with 13 seconds left. Ron Trez Lloyd and then the uh, Van Thung, the kicker, nailed a PAT. 21-20 yeah. final margin. Ed White with the win. What a game. We, we've talked about Ed White kind of being that team that's, you know, kind of been under the radar a little bit. Kind of, uh, you know, not talked about as yep. much. You know, they, they've had – you know, a pretty good season as, you know, they found their lump early with the, you know, losing out of the gate, but they've kind of come on strong. And the big barometer check we have for them was the Oak Leaf game. Yep. They, they were unsuccessful in that one, but then they play a team like Riverside who has been talked about on our radar all season long. So to get a big win like that against a West Side rival is huge. Yeah. And, and especially how, for those young, that young team. Yeah, it's a young team. Yeah. And really, they've lost three games going into that one. Uh, one of those was a Trinity Christian week yeah. one, 21-18. They lost down to Merritt Island, 30-27. Their only really convincing loss was to Oak Leaf, 28-14 games. Right. So uh, Lawrence Johnson and company with a young team, King Boylson's uh, underclassman, uh, Ron Charles Lloyd, I mentioned, yeah. he, the freshman running back, uh, the game-winning touchdown run, um, just so many young guys on that team. And Ed White, like Trinity Christian, really kind of t- took mm-hmm. its lumps in, in phases and have really – yeah. stepped up and I think maybe ahead of the game a little bit, a chance to go 7-3 and three, um, against Baldwin. And it's a must-win game for both of these teams this week. Really, for, for Ed White's instance, uh, they're ranked number 7th in the point standings. You want to potentially leapfrog Riverside at 6 and get into that 5 chasm if you could. Right. That will save you a trip from having to go and even though you're district champ, travel right. to yeah. Choctaw, yeah. the number two seed in yeah. round one. You want to avoid yeah. that. You don't want to go to Pensacola. At least get a home playoff game if possible. So a huge win for uh, the Ed White Commanders yeah. in week 12. Um, another win from last week. Mandarin 18, Oak Leaf 7. I, I missed that game in my picks. Yeah. I, you know, Mandarin has become a defensive team. Yeah. They're not that big offensive threat we saw in weeks one and two. Yeah. This team is defensive rooted. But well, we knew – that was going to have to be the case. And I think what we probably took from it was the week before's game, you know, an 8 nothing win against Fletcher. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're like, okay, obviously they shut Fletcher out, held him to, you know, no, no points. So, you're, you know, you knew the defense was, had been playing good, and we knew that the, the defense was going to have to kind of step up and carry that offense because it's obviously been struggling. Uh, but more so surprised that Oakleaf yep. couldn't get anything going against the good Mandarin defense. Cause yeah. Oakley, for the most part all year, has been able to kind of score on everybody. Right. So kudos to Mandarin and the, the scheme that they threw out there to slow Oakley down because that, like, that, I, w- I wasn't expecting that either. Same. I wasn't expecting Oakley just to come in and blow them out, but I, I thought Oakley would win the game just because I thought they would be able to generate more offensively. I'm with you 100%. I, so I was, kudos, I, kudos to Mandarin on that. And like I said, find ways to win, man. They have become a defensive team this year, and – you know, when you have an elite 11 quarterback and Jamie French, Jamie's kind of been just kind of a guy yeah. uh, since his injury. Um, freshman yeah. quarterback yeah. and freshman receiver, Bryson Wright's fantastic, but they've been running with their big two backs, getting it done, and they have become, I don't know if you saw it, but last week Drake Stubbs, our reigning defensive player of the year, uh, I believe it was four, he ripped off a huge run, heading into the end zone, and Drake came out of nowhere and just ripped the ball from his arms. Yeah. They get the ball. I mean, a sure Oak Leaf touchdown. Mandarin turns that into a takeaway. And when you're going into the end zone, it was really a, a heads-up hustle play by Drake Stubb. Yeah. That's why he's going to Miami. That's why he's getting an All-American jersey he's, he's on that, Thursday night. That, that's what I'm saying. He's that. It's the knack player mm-hmm. who's going to make those type of plays to where he doesn't make what the average player makes. The average player is going to make a tackle or not make the tackle. And, you know, it's a touchdown. But he's going to make that play where he's going to get the ball loose, get it out. He's going to be Mr. Johnny on the spot, getting INTs. Yep. So he, those are the type of players that go on to the next level, you know, when you can make big plays like that to basically help carry your team to a yeah. win in a sense. Yeah, it, it really, that, that Drake sub play last week against Oak League, to me, really epitomizes what this Mandarin team has become. Hustle, heart, 
and you're just kind of going after it because you don't have the horses that you did. And if yeah. you do have the horses, they're they're not full strength. So uh, Drake Stubbs, I think that play last week against Oakley where he ripped the ball out of a ball carrier's hands and forced a turnover really kind of shows that also maybe Manor's not not dead not in the dead, water yet. Dead, it, not, showed, not. it showed that they're a district champ and they're not laying down for anyone injuries be damned yeah. they are going to yeah. still compete exactly and they get a big test this week against a game that you know we thought was going to live up to a big time billing this is in a sense like a playoff game they mm-hmm. got coming so they'll get that feel of hey this is the type of team that we might see if we can get past a round or two in the playoffs we might have to play against a team that can really score it has a good defense as well mm-hmm. so it, big check for them this friday night um or thursday night um but yeah like they're they're not going to – you don't just give up. You yeah. Know, you got to – You gotta. if the sign of a championship team, the sign of a team that's been there before, you rally around what you got to do and just do what you got to do. You know? Yeah. And, and if you're a defensive-minded team now, play defense. Yeah, Sharif Jackson, Tamaj Mitchell, Drake Stubbs, I mean, they have been uh, just getting it done uh, on defense. They have become a defensive program. And they, they were a good defense before, right. but the, the offense was so good and yeah. so prominent that you – didn't pay a ton, ton of attention. I mean, yep. they graduated John Mitchell, yep. you know, guy from Penn State. They graduated so many good players last year, and they've just got new, excellent ones. And Drake Stubbs is is the headliner of that unit. So, uh, great job to that Mander defense. And yeah, I don't think there were a ton ton of other things last week. I mean, Fleming Island beat Middleburg. Yeah, I knew mean, that was was yeah. going to happen. Um, really, I think those two games last week, or really the three games of the Riverside White. Um, a lot of district championships have been decided. Go through them. Creekside won last week, first district championship in its program history. And I guess when you go in a district Atlantic Coast and Sandalwood, uh, you can get that. But credit to Sean McIntyre uh, and the staff there. Yeah. They started out very difficult. And they've always played in tough, tough districts. And they've had to get in there with the Bartrams, the Buholtz, Fleming Islands, Oak Leafs. Um, and this year, it was the fortune of playing a Sandalwood team that's now lost 19 in a row. Yeah. And an Atlantic Coast team. Ouch. So. Um, Creekside's been banging away, and I think they're a good team. That offense is really, uh, really something there. So, District Tramps, Creekside, Black Palm Coast, uh, my Super 10 there team is go. still in the mix. Uh, Mandarin, District Champ, Nisa, District Champ, after Buholtz beat Bartram Trail last week. Fleming Island, uh, Daytona Beach Mainland is a District Champ. They're there in the Kansas. Uh, St. Augustine, Ed White, Tallahassee Godby, they're in there with Baker County. Uh, Reigns is District Champ. Uh, Bishop Kenny is not officially a district champ. They still they're in a three-way tie with Menendez and Parker, but Bishop Kenny's so far out in front of Parker uh, that the Braves are pretty much out. So BK uh, finishes strong. Yeah. They are going to win the district championship. Menendez still has a chance if BK stumbles, uh, but Bishop Kenny, for all intents and purposes, are the district four three A champ. Bowles, of course, wrapped up district championship over Wilson last week. Newberry beat Bradford. Yep. Newberry's got district championship. Uh, Trinity Christian district champ. UC district champ with a big win over Providence yeah. last Thursday. Yeah. That's not one I uh, I picked to happen. Yeah, UC has been struggling all season. Yeah, you know we we haven't talked about UC a lot this year. They played such a just a weird schedule. They have a lot of out of area teams, yeah. teams that you really don't know. I mean, yeah. Wood Day. I mean, they played so many yeah. just odd teams. Yeah, definitely, it's been a different type of season for them yep. over there and. You know, kudos to getting that win against Providence because Providence is – we talk about Providence and their kind of schedule, how they've played the last two years. Their record is, you know, a little inflated because of maybe the mm-hmm. competition they played, but they're still playing good ball, winning games they need to win. But, I, yeah, I didn't see that one either. You know? Didn't see, yeah. It was you know? a wild, wild UC win. And that's one you got to – you know, and UC felt like last year it was really – a gut punch when they lost to Providence. Right. Really felt yeah. almost embarrassed by that loss because you're UC, you get yeah. nice at championships. You don't lose to a, a newcomer like Providence. Providence yeah. been around, you know, 25 years. Not mm-hmm. enough to hang with the the UC prestige. And I think it was a wake up call. And I think UC treated that game like, hey, this is a playoff for us. We're yeah. not we're not that far back where we don't know how to win these games. So uh, credit Coach David Penland the third and staff for getting it done. Before we go into this week's games. Super 10. I didn't have a lot of changes. I, I did have I a couple have teams. It. I think I, when I was looking at yours, I think we're one through nine exactly the same. And I I only put Beachside in, or I kept Beachside in because they were in my 10 last mm-hmm. week. So they're at 10. So I have Fleming at nine. I bumped everybody basically up. So my one through nine is exactly your list. So. Okay. So my 10 and my ten and nine stayed the same. We've got Flagler Palm Coast in there at number 10. Yep. They beat Spruce Creek. 
uh, at Flag of Palm Coast to me, I, I could I could move them out. I could put Ed White in. I could move them out. I mean, Flag of Palm Coast is actually playing pretty decent. Yeah, they are. And they're, they're I could put Union County in. They're so, there's really a good glut of teams. That to me, if I'm if I'm talking about a number 10 team other than Palm Coast, because they're really towards the, the fringe of our coverage region, right. I would put Ed White. I would put Union County in there. I would put Beachside. I do think there are so many other good teams that are right on that cut line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that could get in there but right now i still got flagler palm coast at 10 uh fleming island at nine like what they do on their six and three they're still ranked behind Mm -hmm. the beach sides upon a view those guys even though they've beaten them uh in the regular season at number eight man who do i have at eight you have a part of no part of seven you have uh you have at eight this is mine i'm missing leaf oak leaf today okay oak leaf day upon at seven yep Bradford at six, uh, Mandarin at five. I'm sorry, Bradford at five, Mandarin at six. Yep. Uh, four, three, two, and one of the same. Yep. Bulls, St. Augustine, uh, Nice, and Reigns. And yep. great stories with Nice and Reigns. Nice is, you see Nate, Nate Harry last yeah. week? Man, five TD. Yeah. Uh, just gouged to Coy Creek. Yeah, to Coy Creek. Uh, I, was, I, was getting, them up. I was getting grief online for picking Nice so big over to Coy Creek. And I, I Nice has been dominant this yeah, year. Yeah, they have been dominant this year. Forty-eight, fifteen last week. I, Nate Harry has been killing it. At nice quarterback, and I know he's kind of uh, not mentioned a lot in postseason ranking and stuff. Man, he postseason accolade yeah, yeah, potential, yeah. but he is in that conversation as well. We've got a board over to the side of us yeah. with players of the year, five or seven guys on each side of the ball to kind of look forward to for our players of the year race. And yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to scribble in his, his name as well. Playoffs are really a separator, man. The, the Panthers have been, have been they, clocking it. They've been ever since that, you know, the big upset, you know, they can, and then I think the Buholtz win too was mm-hmm. one of the games that I circled. It's like, okay, this team's for real. Like they, they, uh, that, that, cause that Buholtz is always that team that always gives, you know, the Bartrams, you know, the nieces, yep. The, the, all, they give they just give them trouble, and you know they got that monkey off their back after they beat St. Augustine, and so now you're like, now now they've just been kind of gliding through this mm-hmm. back half of the season. So again, you don't want to like take anything for granted. You don't want to overlook anything. Just keep playing your game, keep doing what you're doing. You know, hopefully you get the good matchups and everything falls into place, and you know you can go on a little run, yeah, like they did a couple years ago. And they've got two tough games left. They do have Beachside this Friday. That's yeah, gonna be that's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be, that'll I, be I want, it's an interesting game. I feel like they should handle that game and they mm-hmm. should win. You know, so I don't think that'll be a problem. And who they close out with? Bartram. Bar, yeah. So they have two two that's, tricky it, games. Those are the, put it this way, those are good games to have going into the playoffs, mm-hmm. in my opinion, versus playing. You know. A Tacoy or a, a you know Atlantic Coast or something like mm-hmm. a team that you know you're going to win against. Like yes, you're better than both of these teams. Yes, you should beat both of these teams, but you actually have to go out and do it. Yeah, you know, and and like I say, these aren't just these are two pretty good programs. You know, Bartram's obviously we talked about them enough. You know, and Beachside's having a really good year. So both good games before you get to the playoffs. Yeah, and and I love what Colin Drafts has done. Ryan Garth, the defensive coordinator. He came back, and, man, they have been lights out on defense. Mark McNair has been yeah. unbelievable. One of them, that Buholtz game yeah. with the, the pick Picks. late in that yeah. game. Uh, Joe Miracle III, I I've mentioned him th- throughout the year. They have just been on fire for, for Colin Drafts, and this just a special team. I was out there uh, the year they went to the regional final. Uh, when was it? 21, 22, Marcus yeah. Stokes, junior yeah. year. Dom Henry was our player of the year, and I went out there practicing on Thanksgiving Day, and I had a chance to see a lot of the old Nice guys uh, back in the heyday, Ted Stachitis, those kind of guys who were the glue guys, really on one of La- Nice's last just exceptional teams. Uh, the last time Nice went unbeaten in a regular season was 06 behind quarterback Ted Stachitis. Mm-hmm. This, he was the, the replacement from Tim Tebow. And people yeah. were thinking, man, how, how is anybody going right. to do what Tebow – well, I mean, Stachitis. He did pretty good. And, and James Wilson, the offensive line. Uh, Zach Trani at running back. Those guys are just a load to bring down. Uh, and they went to the state championship game that year. They were undefeated in the regular season, finally lost to Tampa Plant and a quarterback named Robert Marv in that yep. championship game. Um, but that was uh, Nisa's last undefeated regular season. And I bring that up because this team, when talking to Colin Drafts, it reminds him a lot of those the, the last team that went to the regional final. 
and just that glue kind yeah. of team. And no, they, they definitely have it. They it's, it's in 06, the last time Nice went undefeated in the regular season. They've got two tricky games to close out with Beachside and Beachside throws the ball around well. So uh, that's an opportunity for that secondary to get tested a little bit more going to the playoffs and then Bartram Trail uh, with Jaden Weatherly and Arthur Lewis the fourth. They haven't beat Bart Trail in, in quite some time, but they win those two games, tough games to go out of the regular season with uh, games you yeah. could lose, but yeah. I just think Nice is way too uh, way too far ahead right now yeah. of everybody else. I agree. I totally agree with that. Not a lot of crazy games this week split across two nights. I think we have some exceptional games on uh, on Thursday yeah. being the uh, St. Augustine Manor game. That is going to be the, the immovable object of the Manor defense, be the unstoppable force of the yeah. St. Augustine offense. Lachlan Hewlett has got an embarrassment of riches. Manor's secondary is loaded. Yeah. Uh, Samorian Wingo at Trenton Jones, Carl yeah. Jenkins Jr. That's who Drake Stubbs and Tamaj Mitchell and Shreve Jackson are trying to, yeah. to shut down. That is a collision, man. Yeah. I am looking forward like to I that say, one. That, I, I love what's – it sucks because we knew on paper, you know, we looked at the schedule yep. before in the preseason. You're like, man, St. Augustine and Mandarin. But it's on a Thursday. And, 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 well, <laughs> on a Thursday and on top of, again, I kept saying it too, the last week of the season, yeah. it just, you know, and then, you know, you didn't know injuries, you know, injuries are a part of the game. So you didn't know who was going to be hurt, who's going to be out. But in, in a sense, too, is like this late in the year, one might be one of those things of like, you know, we can rest our guys. We don't have to play guys, whatever. So it, it just felt like that game should have been like a week four or five yeah. you know, early in the year. Um, but again, this is a like I said earlier, this is a great test to see where Mandarin's at again on you know that that barometer scale of all right this is a high powered offense yes our defense is playing really well can we stop these mm-hmm. guys can we slow these guys down and then generate anything ourselves offensively so I, this one I'm going to say I'm going to I'm going to say no again I'm going to go with St. Augustine yeah. by basically saying you know the lesser of the two evils of I have a way more confidence in St. Augustine's right. offense than I did Oakleaf even though Oakleaf had been playing well um, I just think Hewlett and those receivers are too much, even though I love that secondary that Manders got. Mm-hmm. But it's just the combination of, you know, if your offense isn't giving you too much, the defense eventually wears down. It's yeah. just, it's just, it just happens. And yeah. I just feel like that's going to be the case. But guess what? It's a great test. Yeah, it's you know? a great, great test. And, you know, St. Augustine will have a couple weeks off. Yeah. Um, you don't have – well, really, you have one week off because you get the – the gap week next right, week right. for the teams that are making up some some games due to the hurricanes, but that's San Augustine Manor. I wish that was on a Friday and yeah. and not on Halloween right. this year because I do think you're gonna you're gonna lose some of your audience there for right. trick or treating and and whatnot. But Providence Bishop Kenny, another good one. Um, Providence needs to win, and Bishop Kenny needs to really uh, win as well to improve that playoff point standings. Um, not a ton, you know. We're we're almost in that weird spectrum where yeah. we're talking about playoffs and who's in who's out um fletcher trinity yeah. uh, another one on thursday fletcher's got to win trinity needs to boost its uh, playoff standing so not a, not a ton of exceptional games teams are already kind of trying to trend towards the playoffs yeah. or wind down um it, crazy win last week was paxton over Re- reball yeah paxton over reball and i talked to a buddy clayton freeman yesterday at times union and i said i i can't remember the last time that type of game happened. It had to have been in like the 90s. Yeah, well, Paxson was really good in the early 90s. Yeah. They had Antoine Pons, that was, uh, Malcolm Thomas. That was some, when uh, my my head coach, uh, Rob Genis. Rob Genis was, Rob was, a, was the coach at Paxson. Was there, yeah. They had their, those good runs with those guys. Yeah, so, I mean, Paxson what used to be a sledgehammer of a school. And I believe Clayton told me it was 93 was the last time Paxson beat Rebolt. So that, uh, that's a long time. Rebolt in, in like a Sandalwood and a Big time transitional yeah, man, it's, year. It's tough looking at it. it's you, when you said 19 games in a row for Sandalwood. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Cause, I mean, yeah. Sandalwood has been a team that I, I have to look the exact, but they played on like ESPN, Carson Beck, Jeff Sims, senior years. Yeah. You know, I mean, that that was a headlining yeah. game. Yeah. And Sandalwood, uh, even before that, played on national TV on ESPN2, I believe, against uh, uh, Deland. Deland, yeah. yeah, on a thir- uh, weird on a Thursday night. Yeah. But, yeah, it's so so just crazy how the balance of power yeah. has shifted. You know, Sandalwood's lugging a, a 19 game winning losing streak into Parker on Friday night. Parker's looking to finish five and five. 
they got a great quarterback named Toden Kennedy. I think Tony is has got to get his props as one of the best players in recent history for the Braves. What he's done this season, uh, it should be a remarkable finish for five and five. And like I said, they tied with um, Bishop Kenny Menendez. District are not going to get the, get that district championship due to points, uh, but a great turnaround for Mike Holloway. Remember, they lost uh, former head coach Sharon Dorsey. Yeah, um, he passed away. Yeah, and this all before the season started. He had already stepped down, but he and Mike were close, and he meant a lot to that program. So Parker's been through it. They got a new turf field. They're going to finish five and five potentially. A great uh, momentum boost for them. So yeah. uh, some some heavyweights have turned to uh, lightweights. Yeah, it's, and like I say, even Reball, you know. It was always Reigns and Reebok, you know. Reigns was probably ahead, but, you know, Reebok, you know, you always knew mm -hmm. the tradition of what they had, that they were going to be, you know, a powerhouse. And it's crazy how quick things can flip on you, too. Yeah, you know, with, just, the, with the portal era now, yeah, too, man, and everything. Because, you know, plus, you know, teams like the other Northside teams, like First Coast and Jackson, even they, their struggles, mm -hmm. you know. So, um it's tough to see, you know, those perennial, I guess you can call them blue bloods of mm -hmm. Jacksonville, like just be down. Right. <laughs> down bad. And they're down. They're really down. <laughs> they're down really bad. down. And I feel bad for, for Sandalwood because, you know, Adam Guy stepped down after last year. They were winless, and I think they scored 80, 80 points last year, 82 points. This year I think they've scored maybe 40 <laughs> points. So just the offense. They've been shut out five times. So yeah. you, you just – to me, I do think when you're looking at a team like a Sandalwood, like a Ridgeview over in Clay County, you gain nothing by staying in districts and right. playing these games that you're not even competitive in. Yeah, I think you do something like a West Nassau, like a Fernandina Beach, go to the independent path for a couple of years to get things turning back in the right direction because right. it does, you know, the yeah. seasons like Sandalwood's enduring, the seasons like Ridgeview is enduring, they're not even competitive. Yeah. And you're going out here, Ridge, Ridgeview, for instance, lost to St. Augustine, 63 to 7. seven yeah. And it's just, it, it's not good. It's not good for the kids at those schools. It's yeah, not good well, for the it's, kids it's, that are yeah, it, playing against. I, I, exactly. That's, that's really the other thing, too. You don't get nothing from the game at all. And look, you, I mean, like, you look at something what, what like West Nassau did this year. I mean, West Nassau was in pr rebuild and change coaches. They went independent, and now they're 9 and 1 in right. the Sunshine Athletic. Uh, association playoffs. I mean, they massive turnaround for them. It's great for the count, uh, the community that they're in. Right. Great for the kids at school. Yeah. Um, and you're not going to be able to compete. I mean, so many years. I think, West I, Nassau I think the in, problem with that would be it's like a pride thing. You can't you can't step down to that level. So you, so you go get your brains beat in every Friday night. Yeah. You know, it's just like I, yeah, I don't know what the the remedy would be to that. But yeah, I remember when we would play our games. You know. And we'd roll, we'd be like we know who we're playing. And we're like, man, this is gonna be one of those games. This is not even gonna be fun yeah. tonight. We're we're gonna literally, we're gonna score on the second play of the game. Mm -hmm. We're gonna run a play and then we're gonna go seventy five yards for a touchdown with no problem. And it's yeah. just like it doesn't it doesn't do anything. It, it doesn't do anything. Like it's it's a stat game, you know that type of thing. But it's you're not really getting better. Yep. You know because you're not you know you, you're not having any challenge. So the flip side of the demoralizing factor of how you feel like, man, we're just getting killed every single week. Like, it's, that's that's tough, man. Yeah, but you look at it, the, the the my argument for going out of that. No, I agree. I, is, that's what, no, I, that's what I'm saying. You can't it's, compete. You get demoralized every yeah, Friday night. Can't. So it's, it's like at least you can it, be like West Nassau. Like you say, win nine games, at least have something to feel good about. Ab absolutely. Take some positivity. Yep. Maybe then you change that culture. You learn how to win, all that stuff. That's a huge thing. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't disagree with that at all. Yeah, I remember years ago when West Nassau was in there with Bowles. You, in right. range, yeah, you, yeah, were in yeah, the, yeah, you were yes, in. A, you were yeah. in. You could have the best team you've ever had. And you ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Your season's done after week yeah. eleven because you can't compete with that. And yeah. if you're West Nassau, had you been in the district this year, you'd have probably been somewhere in, in the mix with a team you couldn't have competed with. And right. I, I don't know. I mean, three team districts to me are, are garbage. That you know, Creekside yeah. beat Santa Win Atlantic Coast in your district champ. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And that's I'm just using an example off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. um, Creekside would have probably made the playoffs had they still been in the same playoff format we had with Suburban Metro. But right. I I just I'm in favor of a team if you're a Sandalwood, a Ridgeview, a team that's the Fernandina Beach, the West Nassau. If you're not be able to Paxson, Stanton, another one. I mean, if you can't compete in that district, yeah. that you move on. And that's yeah. the best thing for Steve Brown and Paxson is doing what they're doing now. 
beat and rebolt, playing these independent uh, independent schedules, you're gonna have a chance to be your uh, compete for a state championship and a level you can compete with. Hundred percent in favor of that. Yeah. And to me, yeah. there's not there's not a hey, I'm you know we can't. There's no demoralizing yeah. fact of, yeah, yeah. of leaving one to go to the no, other no, because I, you yeah the pride thing is what I was saying, but yeah, and but, I think it used to be that for exactly. sure. So yeah, that, that's the only thing I can see getting in in the way of that, but. I'm, I'm totally in agreement with you. That just builds something different. Yeah, it, Stanton is having a remarkable season for uh, Ryan Carter right. over his first season there. Right. And you think they'd have been having a season no, heck, like now? They're four no. and five. They're yeah. having a, for Stanton, it, that is incredible. Yeah. Paxson, yeah. another great season. West Nassau, it, you're not having these seasons if you're in district play getting your brains beat in right. on Friday night. Yeah. I think I think Ridgeview is a good candidate for that. I think um, Sandalwood's another good candidate for that. And then, hey, build your program back up because football now looks a lot different than it did even 10 years ago yeah. in terms of the student bodies that's walking your hallway, uh, coming out and play football. But I, I really think that um, the moves that Stanton, Pax, and West Nassau, those guys have done, have been done, done wonderful things for the program. And, you know, even the creek sides of the world, right. the guys who are getting in the playoffs – there are so few of those guys are going to go past the first round anyway, exactly. right? Exactly. It totally. Yeah. There, even even those teams, they're going to get in mm-hmm. and get beat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like thanks for playing, but yep. they they got in because of their situation of like you say a three team district or you know maybe an upset and they weaseled their way in and mm-hmm. you know but they're overmatched in a sense still, and that happens all the time. Yep. You know just because nine times out of ten the cream always rises to the top and the good teams move on and. The teams who are kind of in that mid to lower tier, they don't get it done. Right. You know? And you, if you're, you've been one of those teams in that mid to lower tier, felt it for years, mm-hmm. and it doesn't do you do you any good. So I'm in favor of what a lot of our schools in the area have done to really reinvigorate the athletic programs, make football fun and engaging out there on Friday night. You can actually root for your team to have right. success. And, and the Paxons, the Christchurch, the Stantons, those guys are going to be competing in the playoffs, something worthwhile for them. And I think that's that's been a great outlet mm-hmm. for those for those teams. Next week, Sponge Franklin and I are going to come to you, and we kind of teased it last week. Come to you and put together our teams, our players of the last five years, top players at each positions. I've got a few ideas on mine. I know Sponge has some yeah. on his, but we have kind of a weird week next week with only a few games. So we're going to come to you next week with maybe a playoff look ahead, but more so talking about our athletes and, and best players and memories and. Uh, Good times of the last five years. So for Sponge Franklin, Justin Varney, thanks for listening to a Varsity 4 podcast in week 11.